And if you're playing around with two styles, then you're just putting mixed messages in, in your head and in your muscles. Um, quite often we get that wrap of the ball. So you think about a soccer player taking a free kick, kick where they're purposely trying to wrap the ball to get the curve um, and beat the beat the wall defense. We don't want as much of that, obviously, but what we do want is to to naturally and try and get that. And yeah, you're right. Like generally, you find that your your strike on the ball creates slightly slower backspin, which then creates uh, a little bit more distance. Um, but I do encourage, like, you want your ball flight to be the same every time. You don't want to be drawing and fading and going straight and undercutting and hooking. It's, uh, there's way too much there that can go wrong. Uh, Peter, to, to, for, for a kicker who's who's maybe got longer levers, longer limbs, and in compared to kickers that are maybe more compact, do you prescribe um, kickers having their plant foot slightly further away or slightly closer to the ball, depending on their mechanics? Or do you prescribe the plant foot being same the same distance away from the ball for all kickers? Great, great question. So I probably learnt this with Reese Hodge. Do you know who Reese Hodges, the Wallabies yeah, long yeah. range kicker? Big yeah. Boot. So yeah. So he's um he's probably a real clear example. And it probably really uh pointed out that it's more about your strongest lockout point as a kicker. So wherever you're making contact with your kicking foot on, the, foot on the ball, if you're powerful and strong with leaving your plant foot behind slightly to give yourself more room, then there's no issue there. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm totally about your plant foot's unique. Some people enjoy being closer um, because their lockout point, their body's on slightly more of an angle. Whereas Hodgy, because he's so tall and strong, leaves his foot behind and, and that's where he gets his, his best strikes. So it's very unique. Um, and then probably last thing on the plant foot that I always talk about is just having, allowing yourself to be at 30 degrees. Um, you don't have to be lined up with the posts every kick, um, in your technique. Sorry. So you can have a slight in towards the ball because that's, that's the human body and where it naturally wants to be a little bit more comfortable. Awesome, mate. Thank you. All right. Hi, Peter. Um, yeah, so a question from, from, from me as a player who uh, has not been a kicker, um, I play centre. What's your advice to players similar to me who would be looking to add that kind of thing into their game a little bit more and diversify, um, but as pretty much starting from either a very, very low level or even just an intermediate level? Yeah, um, I think best thing is to start with balance because I think a lot of kickers... Um, get out there, try to hack the ball, and they just completely forget about what the rest of their body is doing. So even when you're doing your little drills at training or standing on one foot, like you're never going to be able to execute a kick in a game, especially from center. You're probably going to be in the run unless you've got some balance to your kicking habits. So start there. All your drills um, is all about balance. And then one issue that I always see a lot of people that want to start kicking is they kick from their midline. And what I mean by that is with their ball drop, they're dropping it directly in front of their, their midline. Your foot is actually in, in the line of your hip. So ball starts in two hands and then we push it out. So we go two hands to one hand, two hands to one hand. And that's all about that strong lockout point again that I just spoke about. Your foot's where your hip is. It's not in your midline. And if it is, you you bend your knee, you get your, your foot on slightly an awkward angle. So be strong and, and kick from your hip. Oh, that's great. Thanks. No worries. Uh, hey, hey, I was... When you're obviously not every game you get 100% kicking, goal kicking record, if you've missed like uh, three in a row, how do you stop that from affecting your in game performance? So off the team or like um, you're, you're at the actual game? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's one of those brutal things that I think all us kickers have to go through. So I suppose for me is how confident are you in your technique and that only comes with a lot of reps and a lot of practice and being really organized with your thoughts. So if you can get to the stage where you have missed three, but you're 100% committed to I've got a great plan, I back my technique, um, I know that this thing works, then all of a sudden that fourth kick isn't that daunting. But if you've still got some doubt around your plan and your technique and what you're doing, then you've got you've got no chance. It's, you're really just hitting and hoping. So, um, and that's why I love to get that real clarity around your technique through all the ten pillars because. 
then when stuff isn't going right, isn't going right on the field, you know why, and then your fourth kick is actually an opportunity to to get it right rather than um, this big daunting moment. So, similar to the weightlifter, yeah, they might they might miss their first two two lifts, but they've learned so much from those first two, and their their third lift is going to be successful. So, organize your thoughts and then just back back the plan. Uh, I've got one. Questions. You've spoken a little bit in some of your videos about the the way that you place the ball on the tee and sort of having the scene going left to right will help with that draw. If you're so, let's say you've got a natural draw when you kick. Do you want to be placing the ball so that it sort of helps with that and goes in the same way, or do you want to be placing it the other way to sort of try and counter it? If yeah. That makes sense. Absolutely. And I think Owen Farrell is the perfect example because he, he does that little counter. So the reason why Owen counters it is he still has that draw, but he probably was getting a little bit too much on it. So he's countered it. So when you watch his natural technique, he still does have a slight draw, but it's not as, um, there's a famous kicker over here called Jonathan Thurston, which was just a massive sort of hook kick, but he was really accurate. So, um, Yes, I'm keen on the draw kick, but it can't be out of control and probably drawing 10 metres. It's just that nice little sort of two or three metre draw. So um, probably with your ball seams, doesn't have to be a big roll in. But again, it goes back to your plan. Like you've got to figure out how what makes you a successful kicker. How can you be the most consistent off the tee with that draw and if that means counter counteracting it then that's fine if it means just setting it up on a small draw then that's fine as well um sam that's sort of uh 20 minutes do you do you want to jump into do you want me to jump into the passing stuff uh yeah unless hang on does can, I just, have... ask, <laughs> can I just ask a quick question about your the run-up before you kick so i've i've kind of feel confident in this it took me a while to find my own style of the run-up to the kick I've got my own routine now, but I think I've, I've got a lack of power. Um, and I found out that running more straight angle up to the ball, I get more accuracy. Um, but if I stand more 45, I get more power. Um, and then obviously at longer range, some people like Dan Carter stand more to the 90 degree angle for the run up. Um, and the more angle I get on it, the more power I get, but I just start to lose my accuracy. What would you recommend? Would I, start training more straight onto the ball and is there a way to like get more power that way or should I adjust my run up if that makes sense yeah I don't know exactly what you're saying and again it's a thing that a lot of kickers go through so I would say it as as kickers get older they just don't care about distance anymore um, and I think it, as young kickers we all want to kick the ball from halfway and have massive boots at training but then you know being an accurate kicker that nails everything from sort of I don't know what your kicking range is, but that was something that, that I took real pride in. And then if I trusted my timing and built that technique, then naturally I'd start to get one or two or three more meters on my kick. Um, so my advice would be, you're going to be a really valuable kicker for a team if you're slotting all your kicks that you should be getting rather than worrying about those kicks that may go over or you have to change something that may put you off for the next kick. Um, again, your techniques need to be something that you kind of protect, uh, pr protect and understand, you know, inside out. And if you're playing around with two styles, then you're just putting mixed messages in, in your head and in your muscles. Okay. Cheers. Yeah, that's good. Thanks. Let someone else take the big long range bombs. Peace. <laughs> <laughs> Hey team, thanks for watching that Rugby Bricks YouTube video. Please subscribe to the channel. I want to point out the four passing sessions we have put together. What it is, is I coach you through these four sessions, 60 seconds of work, 15 seconds of rest for 10 exercises. I coach you through, give you the cues, the tips. These exercises are, are drills that the professional use to keep their passing game sharp and keep developing their skill set. So I'd love for you guys to check these out. The link to these four sessions is below. I guarantee if you get through those 100 passing sessions, those really important coaches and selectors are going to really notice your skill standing out on the rugby field. Thanks for watching again. I'll see you back here again for another Rugby Bricks YouTube video.